So, so Suvecha, she is a, a founder and CEO of Unitech, uh, build, a company building bespoke chatbots in the higher education sphere. Suvecha, are you uh, ready to go? Yes, yes. Thank you so much for Very the introduction. Um, let me try and share my um, screen. Well, this is going to take a while. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, perfect. Let me, let me try. And, still, you can see the screen, right? Not the presenter. Uh, we are seeing your presenter view, I think. OK, all right. Um, awesome. I'll try and go without it, I guess. <laughs> awesome. All right, so my name is Subu, and I'm the founder of Unitech. Uh, we provide uh, customized chatbot solutions to universities to help with the clearing and, and adjustment uh, processes. I'll discuss a bit more about that in a minute. Um, yeah, so my sort of objective is if, to sort of share any learning experiences I have so that if you think about building a chatbot tonight, you have something to sort of, some ideas, I guess. Um, yeah, so I, would talk, I will talk about Unitech chatbots. Uh, lessons that I've learned that we as a team learned while building a chatbot from scratch and uh, chat, chatbot um, and also I want to uh, speak about business challenges that we face and um, I want to, I want to share this because I want to initiate sort of conversations and see if we can collaborate uh, in some of the research challenges that we have. Uh, so the a little bit about the company we provide chatbots as I said to automate clearing and adjustment process. Um, clearing is a very business critical time for a lot of universities and they receive a lot of inquiries in the form of emails, um, social media, mes direct messaging, um, phone calls, etc. And uh, we as a chatbot want to provide a, set, uh, a platform through which these inquiries um, can be um, streamlined. We provide provisional undergraduate offers, um, schedule interviews and follow-ups through the chatbot so that the initial uh, pre-application stage is, um, is uh, automated and staff don't have to invest a lot of time. Um, we do this through our chatbot sits on the website and social media and um, we also sort of couple the chatbot with a powerful dashboard so um, staff can sort of visualize the data that's coming in as well as make some real-time updates. The way it looks is on the right hand side you see um, chatbot integrated to Facebook Messenger and on the left hand side, sorry the other way around, you see the dashboard sort of presenting um, data visits etc which you can customize to see, um, customize to um, Customize. We provide handover options, which which I think is quite critical when you're building a chatbot. Um, if a chatbot can't answer any questions, then the, uh, then through the dashboard, um, staff can continue the conversation, um, manage any outbound messaging, etc. Um, now talking about chatbots in a nutshell, there are three different sort of types, basic types. At the current um, chatbots that exist are a hybrid of all of these, a question answering bot, um, the Google Assistant is one, task oriented bot helps you schedule an interview or uh, uh, reminds you to take a tablet in the evening, and a social chat um, increasingly used in mental well-being applications um, recently. So starting the process, um, the main exciting bit I think, at least for me, um, we spent a lot of time um, sort of rethinking our conversation flow and development environment. We, in hindsight, we should have started with that. A granular sort of granular plan would have pre prevented us from reworking so much of our code initially. It's a very trivial make a plan before you start uh, idea, but I think it's very important to stress, um, stress the importance of planning it early on. Uh, we resorted to repeating our bot trainings, 
deleting our intense entities, et cetera, off the chatbot and redesigning the bot conversations from scratch, which was a lot of work and unnecessary work. Uh, designing a conversation flow uh, when thinking about development, the development environment is quite crucial. It helps you identify which functionalities you can group into microservices, um, how many agents would you need? So you wouldn't want to think, you wouldn't want um, one bot to be solving all the problems. Uh, you would want to um, design multiple agents working together to, um, um, to serve a purpose, to solve a business functionality. Um, in terms of the, again, the development environment, um, it's um, one of the mistakes that we made initially when we were starting as we sort of did a lot of code in the back end as opposed to push, uh, um, pushing that development in the front end. So we used extensively Dialogflow and IBM Watson platforms to initially get the MVP running. And when we were doing so, uh, we were using the backend functionalities a lot more. And that meant um, in terms of scaling any, um, scaling any functionalities, it was very difficult to scale any functionalities. And when there were updates made to Dialogflow or IBM Watson versions, then we risked uh, have our code not working and our code not working, which is a, a sort of a problem that one can avoid very quickly by just thinking about development environment and conversation flow early on. In terms of context identification, it was very important for us to um, identify how the, uh, how the conversation was going on. So, um, um, it was very important. We used uh, existing tools. There are existing tools like um, you can have, you can track your dialogue. You can, you can track the life cycles of intents and entities within the platform, within the dialogue flow and IBM Watson platform to identify that context and um, sort of tailor your coding accordingly. Um, but there are certain challenges that I'll sort of come back to a lit in later slides. Um, in terms of data storage, I think it was uh, data privacy, data storage, and security is perhaps I think the perhaps the single most important factor to consider when building a bot. Um, where your data is stored is very crucial in microservices design. We initially didn't care about where the data was stored, and ended up whitelisting all our IP addresses, and which was a massive um, security concern and drastically in increased our. Um, uh, expenses on platforms like Dialogflow and IBM Watson. Um, so, so trying to, so, so thinking about data storage and governance, as um, uh, Helen said, would be very crucial sort of early on when you're thinking about building building a chatbot. Version control um, and documentation. Have, have missed that bit there. Um, it's very trivial, save your work and make sure it's, um, you have a date and uh, time, time attached to it, a timestamp attached to it. But um, the documentation side of things, it took us a lot more. I think we spent a lot more time on documentation and still didn't complete it. Um, and that took a toll on us because um, we had to redo a certain work. And then when there were any updates made by one particular team member, then, um, the entire uh, bot was not working. There were glitches because of um, problems with version control. We used simple tools like um, GitHub, uh, and there was sort of, um, I mean, we, we used GitHub, but um, I think a more integrated, synchronized um, version control system provided by, in our case, Google Cloud Platform would have been much more easier to, to roll out. Um, of course, when you're building the bot, you want to consider tenant crossovers. Um, so you want to consider noisy neighbor problems, especially when implementing third party API services. This was a problem for us, I think, um, fairly beginner sort of problem. Uh, when we were implementing calendar and API, uh, Gmail um, API services, um, there, were, there was a lot of problem around um, emails being sent and calendars, invites being sent to one particular email in a synchronized load testing environment, which was quite sad. <laughs> um, so uh, when, when training agents, it's, as I mentioned earlier, instead of 
building one massive application might be worth thinking about multiple different functionalities and um, when choosing when designing that agent related to that functionality thinking about um, one mega agent uh, training one uh, training agents separately as well as together as mega agents which i think is quite crucial early on um, defining complex entities um, can help you prevent asking same questions again and again. I think um, it's, it's quite important in terms of a user experience point, user experience. Um, a conversation flow can be managed well with um, intents and subintents, um, as opposed to training multiple intents in um, a platform and having them um, having the cross the training crossover happen within uh, happen. You can have sub intents, of course, which is very, very trivial again, but uh, something to think about um, when you're starting. Um, fallback is was very crucial for us. You don't want uh, every fallback, every um, a misinterpreted, um, inter every fallback to be, sorry, I can't understand. Can you please rephrase? That would be uh, a huge, um, 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 it wouldn't be a good user experience for the people you, using the bot. So you want to identify your conversation dialogue, uh, conversation endpoints, and how that would, uh, how each conversation would have a fallback, and how would you, how you would respond to that fallback. So going back to my earlier point around how important it is to have a minutely detailed um, conversation flow when thinking about um, building a chatbot. There are, of course, um, automated training tools um, based on the conversation that uh, a bot has with uh, external users. These are provided by, uh, these, are, these are inbuilt uh, within the Dialogflow and IBM Watson. I especially talk about Dialogflow and IBM Watson because um, that's what I've worked with extensively. Um, the existing third party uh, um, um, platforms that help you build chatbots easily have multiple integration and handover options. Uh, we currently integrate with Facebook Messenger, um, Viber, um, Calendar, Gmail API, Google Drive, and Apogee. Um, when the massive sort of API marketplace that's available in Google Cloud Platform, for example, means that one can focus a lot more on the business functionalities side of things rather than thinking about the nitty gritty of the tech. Um, so as a hobbyist, you can have a chatbot running fairly quickly. One thing to remember is that the integration and uh, handle integration in general is platform sensitive. So we spent a lot of time where we were um, designing a, our bot on Dialogflow Messenger, but the, the bot didn't work when we used when we integrated that with our website because we didn't consider compatibility of the bot across different um, sites at the start. Something that I don't want you to um, forget, I guess. Um, while testing the agents, um, Dialogflow, both the platforms have uh, inbuilt testing platforms, of course. Um, one word, as I said, um, it's important to test across multiple platforms that you want your bot to be in. Um, we want our we wanted our bot to be both on website and social and on and on Facebook Messenger. And um, when we were building for one, we were not thinking about the other, and that caused a massive problem. And we had to go back and redo our um, uh, our um, coding, which is um, quite. Um, quite slow, it brings down the whole process. Um, in our case, as I said, it was website and social uh, media outlets. Also, um, it is important to sort of test uh, whether your isolation strategies, your uh, authentication strategies are working. Um, I mentioned earlier on when we did a load testing and we had multiple users using our bots simultaneously, um, we found that our email addresses, were, our email follows were being sent to just one particular email address as opposed to having everybody um, have, have it following up with everybody else. So um, it's important to test whether they work or not and whether um, and test it with multiple um, users at the same time. We had to go back and rethink our whole um, programming approach, object-oriented programming approach. Um, when we built our application, 
uh, we sort of built uh, we programmed everything in one massive large uh, application which meant that the back end became unmanageable very quickly um, especially as we were working to integrate more features um, it's worth considering um, dividing your um, your uh, app, app, your application your functionalities into multiple microservices um, in our case we have divided our um, core functionality into course inquiries recommendation generation and eligibility checking and um, the reason why i think uh, very very simply uh, microservices are very important because it helps you one glitch wouldn't bring down the whole system and that's quite crucial uh, in dialog flow platform um in dialog flow platform the continuity plan for the whole platform is that uh, the service that bot rolls back to the previous um stable version right so that means any updates you make or any um source of glitch that you've identified might not be accurate which is um quite uh, it can bring down the whole process of identifying this and fixing the glitch um also sort of dividing microservices means that you can have um scaling pretty easily Building SaaS uh, model around our bots was a um, quite difficult task, um, just because we were not thinking about that early on. We were not thinking about how a user would be authenticated, how it would be author, how the user would be authorized, and how the data privacy, how their data would be protected and um, and shared with with um, with uh, universities through the dashboard. So we were not thinking about multi-tenancy at the start. And I think uh, when you're thinking about service, a functionality, it's important to consider how you are building tenants, how you're onboarding tenants, how you are um, um, how you are authenticating them and how you, how you are storing the data. Um, in terms of um, awareness of the tenant. So it was, as I said, it was uh, quite in important for us to understand who was applying. So we had basically considered, we had made personas around um, uh, an, an user based on what they did in their high school. So if somebody did uh, IB, uh, international baccalaureate in high school, then we would sort of class them as uh, persona A. And um, if they did A levels in high school, in high school we would classified them as persona B, et cetera. But um, we later realized that because of this, um, because of this, our programming was quite slow and um, our developers ha were having to sort of think about how, how each context would play out in, in the chatbot. Uh, one of the advice um, that I've received, that we have received as a team as well, is, um, is to sort of move towards a context um, agnostic programming um, in, in terms of building, in, while building the SaaS models where you can scale easily. Um, we are currently working on metering and logging as well. We haven't reached there massively just yet. And um, I think that's important to think about, especially because we're scratching our head right now to thinking about how we can um, get the conversation data, how we can extract and uh, extract data from user conversation and use that, um, use that to um, provide crucial analytics, like how many people are looking into nursing course at the same time. Uh, how can we um, extract the information and provide real-time data. Um, also to think about is how your roll, rollout strategy is going to work out and how you can um, min, maintain, maintain the SaaS model after um, a, a, a SaaS model, especially when your agent is, when your bot is still being trained. Um, in terms of resources, a great starter for me when I was starting out as a hobbyist, of course, uh, I, uh, it was Coursera on YouTube resources. It's an amazing, um, it's an amazing list, uh, amazing community, massive community of chatbot enthusiasts who um, sort of talk about chatbot design extensively. And um, I found uh, courses from um, Coursera in Google Cloud Platform and Amazon Web Services particularly useful um, as a startup. There are massive trial, there are big, not really big, um, there are trial versions available and they help you learn 
a particular platform fairly quickly. All you need is a um, list of email addresses that you can use uh, to sign up for these trial versions and learn. Um, there is a massively great, ama amazing um, open source platform, um, Rasa. We as a business are also thinking about moving into Rasa and building a more, um, uh, building a chatbot where we can have more granular control of um, granular control of the conversations, especially because currently we're using uh, we're using existing platforms like Google and um, IBM for um, the NLP and NLG side of things. But we want to make uh, the, we want to cater the NLP um, around edtech around the education space and on, around the higher education domain. So that's where we are, we're looking um, into. If, in, like, if anybody in the audience are pro Rasa or have worked with Rasa, I would really love a chat. Um, in terms of the business challenges, um, first is building an emotionally intelligent conversation. We want to be fault tolerant to people that might, be, uh, that might have dysgraphia or um, might not use correct English while typing or while communicating uh, through text. Um, we want to, we want our bot to not fail, um, not fail when there's an emoji being used. And I, we want the bot to understand what that emoji may, means and how the bot should tailor its conversation. Um, so we want to build wrappers around around our existing chatbot to have this um, emotionally intelligent conversation. Similarly, we want to extend um, the intended user of our bot. We want to um, we want to help international students um, speak uh, to the bot. Being an international student myself, I um, I find that the communication patterns and languages being used are very different, and the messaging that needs to go to international students are very different in different sectors of the world and. We want um, international students applying to universities to have an easy, um, easy conversation platform through which they can um, inquire about courses or get their offers. As I mentioned bef before, we want to move to Rasa, and uh, we want to, as a, we want to have more granular control of our um, um, chatbot, um, of our um, chatbot features, of our conversations, etc. And another important bit is how do we manage authentication and um, authentication in both inbound and outbound conversations. We don't want to um, create a scenario where we have to ask LinkedIn, uh, sorry, social media handles or email addresses before a chatbot can um, be useful to any particular person. But we also don't want to be in a position where we lose a lead lose a potentially interested person because a chatbot, uh, our chatbot didn't deliver what, what we wanted, what, what, what the user wanted. So um, massive uh, opportunity around inbound and outbound, con outbound conversations. Um, we also want uh, more uh, synthetic data being developed uh, to train our bot immediately uh, so that we can, we can have the we can be we can build a more resilient bot which can answer um, answer queries <clears throat> similar queries but worded differently. If you are uh, designing a bot tonight or thinking about um, a trial, let's speak. I'm fairly um, uh, active on LinkedIn. Thank you. If you have any questions or recommendations or comments. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Subu. I, uh, I, I really appreciate you going over the, 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 the challenges you face building uh, up uh, an entire company. And, uh, it, you know, everybody has these challenges and, and, and hits these problems. I mean, but it's, uh, it's really good to uh, have, a, have, have that in the conversation as well. I mean, uh, we built something really impressive, but it wasn't easy. And, uh, so thank you for that. Do we have questions from the audience? I've got a good question. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, first of all, thanks for the talk. Um, I just, uh, just wanted to ask if you're using um, Spring Boot for microservices. As you mentioned, that you, you're using microservices. You're using Spring Boot? 
Not yet. We are extensively sort of relying on um, Google Cloud Platform. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm fairly new to the whole um, technical uh, software development side. So <laughs> Spring Boot, I uh, will research. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I don't really have a question, but um, I can empathize with the struggle of trying to get chatbots to work because um, I was co-founder at a startup and we were running a chatbot over mobile. So we didn't just have to deal with NLP, but we had to deal with audio processing as well. So yeah, yeah I can imagine yeah, it must have been. Really cool it must have been very yeah. difficult because you're trying to um the bot can go wrong very quickly can't it so yeah. it, it will work only it's it, only if it works so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no it, it's really cool i like and really interesting talk as well like going through the process of... thank you uh, it was a lot about um what we did wrong <laughs> <laughs> starting up that's yeah. The, yeah that's the interesting stuff <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, other questions? You see, I have a question. Uh, do you still answer your own email or is that a chatbot of yours? Not yet. We're thinking about email automation. That's one thing that um, has come from user um, business development activities that we've been talk, um, doing. So, um, universities, as you can imagine, receive tens of thousands of emails, right? And they're fairly general. They're not <laughs> personalized all the time. So we're thinking about email automation. Hopefully, the next time we talk, we'll have something. I, I think I would uh, pay, pay a lot for an uh, uh, email responder uh, personalized to me. Mm -hmm. uh, more questions? I would have a uh, quick question. Um, thank you. In my experience, like I'm, I'm not really educated on this subject, but I started hearing about chatbots like maybe five years ago, and they were like a huge, huge thing then. But after that, I haven't really followed it. So is there really a big market today in it, or is there just a few big players that actually provide all the chatbots? Um, there are of course, um, the big providers. There are also open source platforms like Rasa where you can build the chatbot by yourself. I think we increasingly see um, the financial side of things. I think um, the existing providers make that easy, easier um, than uh, having to scale, uh, for example, when you're talking about traffic um, management and platforms like Google and IBM, they already provide that scalable architecture as opposed to having to develop it yourself. I think that would be a challenge um, developing everything from scratch. So yeah, there's a reason why the big providers exist, I guess. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thank you. Uh, on the so what is a reasonable number of uh, sort of endpoints to break the conversation down and and uh, uh, so what is the sort of a granularity that a chatbot can uh, distinguish intent um, as like a state of the art currently yeah i the way the way we we went about it is um the conversations that you have how many turns can potentially a one student, um, like what are the questions that one student can ask, right? And based on the potential responses, I think that's how we categorize our endpoints. Um, in terms of the state of the art, um, how many? I'm not sure. <laughs> no worries, sorry to put you on the spot on that. Uh, any uh, other questions? Because otherwise um, we shall... Uh, move on 